So we're going to look at the main name registrars and TLDs today. In the previous video so far, we've set up a WHM reseller and we've set up a hosting package product. But with a domain name, uh, those are things that people often want to have with those. So if you're using Upmind for your hosting business, you might want to sell domain names. The way that most people sell domain names is they go through a domain wholesaler. So unless you become ICANN accredited, you would use a domain wholesaler to sell your domains. That would be someone like Enom or OpenSRS or Reseller Club. You can see we've got nine current wholesalers integrated or domain providers integrated. Um, we, we're adding more and more. Use whichever one suits you best. Have a research to see which one maybe gives you the best price or has the best features for you. We work with them in the same way and we're completely agnostic. Uh, obviously, for those of you who know domains, you're, there's a couple of here which are specific. So Nominet, for example, is the UK domain registry. Um, in fact, that is the only specific one here. The others are all wholesalers. And as I say, we're adding more. I've, for the purposes of this example, gone and got an OpenSRS, a new OpenSRS account, just because it was the easiest I had to hand. But setting them up is the same no matter which one you use, and, and you can't really go wrong with any of the any of the big ones. Uh, so what we do, we go to the Upmind dashboard, host control, and then the first thing we want to do is we want to add a registrar. So let's add OpenSRS. What it's going to prompt me for is OpenSRS login details or API credentials, which I'll show you how we get. So first of all, this is OpenSRS name. It's just a name I, as an admin and my staff, are going to be able to see. If you had two OpenSRS accounts, you could, in theory, have OpenSRS v1 and OpenSRS v2. Um, if you have multiple different domain registrars, and oftentimes you might end up with multiple because some might offer you a cheaper domain for, say, .com than some offering you for, for a CCTLD, uh, you might want to give these different names. But we're just going to use one at the moment to OpenSRS. Um, these default tick boxes, ignore for now, leave them unticked. We're going to come to looking at that when we look at dynamic provisioning. Provision configuration. So here is where we enter our credentials for OpenSRS. This is my brand new OpenSRS account. Literally all I've done is created it and I've added $20 just so I can register some, make some domains as an example. My username is host billing. And the key I get from account settings, API settings, and here. Uh, you'll also see these uh, IP addresses here. These are ones I've added. You'll get those in our docs and you'll see it in the video notes I've put in as well. Uh, you need to allow our IP addresses for Upmind to be able to connect to your OpenSRS instance. The rest of this is ignore. So is, you can ignore. So just to recap, I've literally added a name, ticked the provider and entered the username and API key. Create. That's done. Next, before we add a domain TLD, Go to settings here you need to fill this out when we register a domain name there's certain information that we need to add those are things like a default name server or an admin contact this takes it from this page so so make sure you filled out the settings tab and and hit save once you've changed anything okay now we can go to tlds i added a couple of demo examples but let's add a new one from scratch so we're gonna do dot biz next then registrar, I'm going to use OpenSRS. Late renew, max registration period, redemption period. Now TLDs, by TLD I mean top level domain or com, net, biz org, can have varying rules on, for example, how late you can renew it before it drops, how long you can register a domain name for, what happens when it drops, does it then get deleted completely or can you redeem it? What we've started here with these is the ability for you to define how you want a TLD to work. What we're loading shortly, or what we'll bring in shortly is our predefined recommendations. So we'll go and do the hard work basically to say, this is what this TLD needs. If in doubt, you can leave it as the default. One example is a .com is registered for 10 years. Another domain, might only be registered registrable for one year in total. Some others like a .eu domain cannot be renewed late, whereas a .com you can renew up to 30 days late. For example, I'm gonna say late renew 
of 20 days. I'm going to say a max registration period of 10, redemption period of zero. As I say, you can just leave the defaults here. Don't worry about doing anything here. Soon we'll be bringing in our recommendations. Again, leave these. This is quite advanced configuration on when you want invoices to be raised and when you want payment for those invoices to be to be due by. Uh, pricing. So we're going to just add a yearly price. So every 12 months, and I'm going to make it populate it to all to all years. As I said in another video, I'm not going to go into multi-currency in this set of videos, but just to show you that I can do it in euros too, I'm going to do it there. So that as you can see, that's populated a, a price for every year going up to 10 years. And I'm going to admit that there. Okay, so now we have our .biz product added. If I log in as a client, you should now see, I'm going to place new order. This domain names category is automatically shown up and it should show me not my dot biz here. So this is my dot biz domain. I'm going to enter a register of address. All right. Okay, so that's my domain name all registered. Let's go back to here. Here, so I misspoke when I said all registered. I placed the order because I didn't actually make a payment. It's not registered, but I will show you. I want to show you in the admin area how it now looks. So this is the order that we received from this user I created said domain reg example. This order is for this domain biz registered my test dot biz. It's not registered yet. It's pending because there's a payment due. What I'm going to do as an admin, I'm just going to add an offline payment so that it triggers the registration. So now if you go back to this product, you'll see it's now awaiting activation. Awaiting activation is almost certainly because it's running something behind the scenes to try and register it. And if you go to the manage tab on any product that has what we call a provision configuration, by that I mean a domain provider, for example, you'll see our interactions with the registry. And here you can see success. This domain is now fully registered. Again, if I go back here, you'll see active renews in a year. Now let's log in as a client and you'll see that domain now from a client side of view. So here we go. This is the client's domain. Here they have the invoice that was done. Here they can also manage, so they can manage things uh, like their name servers. You can see it's using the default name servers we set, but if I wanted to do, for example, ns1. Dot, I don't know if these even work. You'll see that's updated them again. They can also do things like update the domain registrant. They could lock and lock the domain. And just to prove to you that this filters through to OpenSRS, you'll see here, register my test, PLD status with all that information in there. That is as simple as we could make domain registrations working with all these different providers. I hope you, I hope you like how simple it is. Um, as I said, you can add different uh, reg registrars here and we, we keep adding more. You can add more TLDs. You can, uh, for example, when you add a new TLD, you can copy pricing from another. So for example, if we wanted .com .au domains to be the same price as a .biz, we would do this. And then it would just copy the prices over and create and then just like that, We've now also got my .com.au domain showing here in the, in the drop down. So hopefully very straightforward. 
that's the basic, basics of domain names. We're obviously going to cover a lot more as we go through these um, hosting setup guides.